over 1, this is all logical is equal with the new production. This is, in fact, a continuation of the continued fraction expansions uh, series. So, I hope you enjoy it. Without any further ado, let's uh, bring up the PowerPoint. And here we have it. Continued Fraction Expansions Part 3. Alright? So as you'll recall from the previous uh, sections, the previous episodes, phi, the golden ratio, this very special algebraic irrational number, can be written uh, using this notation as 1, semicolon, 1, comma 1, comma 1, comma 1, indefinitely, on and on. And the reason for that so, and what that, what that obviously represents, uh, you know, we, we, we went through that, basically, in the uh, previous episodes. But what is important about this continued fraction is, well, you know, one, one thing that's important are, is basically the nature of the nth convergence. So the rational, you can think of it as kind of like, if we were to sort of truncate this continued fraction expansion at a certain finite point. So to make, basically, to make it into a finite approximation, or uh, in other words, a, a rational approximation is what that really means, um, of that irrational constant, uh, we end up with these nth convergence. So, and you can verify this yourself, obviously, you can try this at home, uh, but what we get is, for instance, 5 thirds and then 8 fifths, and then 13 over 8, and then 21 over 13, and 34 over 21, you get the special sequence of numbers, which I'm sure you'll, you'll recognize as being the Fibonacci sequence. And so, so therefore, you know, the nth convergence for the golden ratio are f sub n over f sub n minus 1. So certainly that's very beautiful, and, uh, you know, it's uh, somewhat, uh, you know, w w one of the perhaps somewhat more well-known interesting facts about the golden ratio, uh, for those who know about it. And this sort of helps explain why we get that, why we get, um, you know, the, the limit of the Fibonacci numbers converging to phi. It's because the Fibonacci numbers, you know, the ratios of Fibonacci numbers are the uh, nth convergence of the CFE, the continued fraction expansion. Um, so that, that provides at least a surface level um, explanation, you could say, for why this is true. But uh, as it turns out, we can sort of think about it a different way and think about it a, a little bit more in depth. So, so as you can see, one thing to consider is what is the general rule for f sub n? Is there a closed formula? And many of you will know already that the answer is yes, in fact. Um, you know, obviously the Fibonacci numbers are defined recursively, at least that's, that's the conventional definition, uh, where f sub n is equal to f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2. Uh, that's the one that everyone knows. But the, uh, the general rule for, for f sub n is what we'll see in a moment. And it is a very interesting closed formula because we can just substitute n into this general formula. And we end up with a number that's an integer. Uh, and so it, it could make calculating them more efficient, arguably. And then also uh, it gives us a bit of a better sense for, you know, the, the growth of the Fibonacci numbers. And so, so I'll just show you the formula. But it's very interesting because it uses phi. And here it is. So f sub n is equal to phi to the n minus phi bar to the n all over the square root of 5. And I just like to specify that phi, uh, you know, that, that first phi to the n, that, that is indeed referring to phi, the golden ratio. So that number itself, that's just a number, just a constant. And then phi bar, I would like to specify, if it isn't already clear, phi bar here refers to, well, there are a couple different ways of defining it. Uh, ultimately, its value is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5, all over 2. And what you'll find is that it's basically the 
alternative route, basically, the alternative route to the same polynomial to which phi is a root, basically. So, so phi, obviously, is, is, or at least converges to 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now, if you consider the equation, which is what I'm about to show you, the equation for which phi is a root, or, or the polynomial, in other words, well, that is x squared minus x minus 1 being equal to 0. And so the one other uh, root that you get for that polynomial, assuming that we keep the uh, coefficients to, we restrict them to being real numbers, which is fairly intuitive, or at least, uh, yeah. In other words, we're, we're not allowing the polynomial for which phi is a root to be, you know, what would that be? Like, x minus the quantity 1 plus root 5 all over 2. We're not allowing that. That would be a little bit cheap. Um, so basically, what I'm saying is we want the coefficients to be rational, I should say. Um, and what we'll find is that, uh, in particular, in, in algebraic number theory and, and Galois theory, things like that, you know, there are some really interesting, seriously uh, compelling and, and I almost want to say sobering, so some really interesting uh, results in Galois theory and number theory, things like that. I, I very much encourage you to look it up there. There are some really very powerful truths there. But, um, you know, f for now, let's, let's focus on the CFE, I suppose. Uh, and so we're keeping the coefficients to be, coefficients to be rational. And so, uh, this is the polynomial that, that arises. And whenever we do that, well, yeah, I if we do that, if we require the coefficients to, coefficients to be rational, we also pick up this phi bar as an alternative root of the polynomial. We, we kind of have to. But let's, let's think about how we would generalize this re result, all right? So... So in this case, let's try to find a formula or, or some related connection uh, because I'm telling you that there is one that exists. There's a very interesting theorem that exists, and I'm going to present it to you. So in generalizing it, phi is no longer actually phi, so to speak. I know that, that sounds somewhat contradictory, but we'll be analyzing a general class of algebraic irrational numbers. So what we're really talking about is that we're replacing phi with a more general kind of number. It's a, it's a general irrational number, as we'll see. Um, and when we say f sub n, for future reference, we no longer, in this presentation at least, we no longer really mean the Fibonacci sequence per se, but it re refers to a very general sequence, which we'll get to in a moment. And this will be the sequence of numbers where consecutive quotients of the terms approximate the root of an interesting polynomial. So again, we're going to see this, this general pattern emerge, a, a, um, a general truth that applies not just to phi, the golden ratio, but to many other irrational numbers. And so we're going to study that. Um, and what is the general rule for f sub n that we'll be using? It is f sub n equals x 1 to the n minus x2 to the n all over x1 minus x2. And x1 and x2, as we'll see, they refer to the roots, in fact, of the specific polynomial x squared minus bx minus 1. So again, that's very interesting. And we'll see numerous examples in, in, in the future. We'll, we'll see what this, what this really means. So for one example, let's choose b equals 2. It's actually a fairly uh, intuitive kind of example, because what we've just seen before is where b equals 1, right? Because our polynomial is x squared minus x minus 1. Well, now let's change it. Let, now let's make our coefficient of x be negative 2. Well, in this case, the polynomial that emerges, or rather the, the continued fraction expansion that emerges, is 2, semicolon, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, indefinitely. 
And of course, as I just mentioned, the polynomial that's associated to this whole connection, with this whole theorem, is x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And so the roots of this polynomial equation, as as I'm sure you know, you can calculate, it's rather simple. We can just apply the quadratic formula if, if we want to. And we end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 4 all over 2, which, of course, simplifies to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. And in this case, we'll be considering the, uh, the positive root because it is uh, greater in absolute value. So that's the number that we'll be studying, in fact. 1 plus the square root of 2. That's our special irrational number. So as a result, and, you know, what this theorem is telling us, in fact, it's very interesting... Shoot, sorry. Very interesting kind of connection is that the CFE equals this root. So that's the connection we're drawing. And as a result of that, what I've done on the very next line is just sub subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. And so we end up, of course, with 1 semicolon, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, etc., etc., on and on indefinitely, being equal to the square root of 2. And so our generalized sequence I put Fibonacci in quotes because it's it's really a generalized sequence applying to this polynomial or CFE is well let's substitute it in shall we uh, so f sub n that this is our general formula x of one to the n minus x of two to the n all over x one minus x two and we know the roots of the equation now they are one plus the square root of two and one minus the square root of two so let's provide some some examples of, you know, what this sequence actually gives us. Well, the, the first term, of course, where f sub 1, or where n equals 1, we know that f sub n equals x, x1 minus x2 all over x1 minus x2, so that is equal to 1, and that is, in fact, a general result. This right here. It's actually a general result. So, so for all these generalized Fibonacci sequences, what we'll get is the very first sequence, the very first uh, element of the sequence, will always be 1. So that's very interesting. But it gets better, because once we substitute in, and you can check my work here, it's just some basic elementary algebra, you know, expanding different uh, binomials in this particular case. So it's uh, 1 plus the square root of 2 squared minus... 1 minus the square root of 2 squared, and then all over 2 root 2. And then we ultimately end up with 4 root 2 over 2 root 2, so that's equal to 2. And what we'll find is that this does indeed simplify, uh, in every case, to an integer. So this is, you know, getting a somewhat wider perspective, and, you know, sometimes it helps to calculate these sequences, you know, especially when n grows large, it, it might uh, help to uh, use a calculator or computer or something in order to, you know, make sure you haven't made a mistake and, and you know, it's, it's to be sure, basically, of the actual value of the sequence. And in doing so, we can create lists, basically, of the entries in this sequence. So the nth terms, where b equals 2, are going to be 1, 2, 5, 12, and we can continually calculate them. So we get 29, 70, 169, 408, and we can keep going. 985, and then here's a second column. I, I won't read them all out, but uh, if you were to continue calculating them, feel free to check me, but if we were, we, we'd get these numbers. And you'll notice some things, perhaps, about this sequence. Um, you know, there's... You know, the, the, the most obvious thing is just that they're increasing exponentially. Which, of course, makes sense, given our uh, our closed formula here for our 
nth term of Fibonacci, or of a general sequence. So they're increasing exponentially, which is what you'd expect. Uh, but what's another implication of this? Well, think about it, think about it. We get this general sequence of uh, integers, and uh, an implication is basically that if we use these numbers, we can get, if we use the ratio of these consecutive numbers in the sequence, we can actually end up with a rational approximation for our irrational constant. So this is very clever, all right? So watch this. What we can do is we can say that the very last, I've taken the last two entries, basically, in this sequence. Uh, so this 2,744,210, and then 1,136,689, I've just substituted them, you know, into a ratio. And, you know, a very fascinating result is that this approximates the root of the polynomial, which has the greater magnitude. So in this case, 1 plus the square root of 2. And from here, what we can do is sort of simplify this. Basically, all we're doing is isolating the square root of 2 itself. And we can simplify the left-hand side of the equation to be a single rational number, which will be 1,607,521 all over 1,136,689. And so one prank, or I shouldn't say prank, but one kind of, uh, I almost want to say meme of some sort, uh, but it's, it's basically a prank, essentially, that you can do, and you can actually play this on your friends, it's actually quite fun, is basically to tell them, especially if they have a, a calculator, like some kind of, uh, I don't know, TI-89 or so, some kind of, uh, you know, basic, you know, eight or nine digit calculator of some sort, is to tell them to actually type this into their calculator. Uh, this left-hand side specifically, this one million over one million something, and then tell them to square that result. And so when it, when it ends up happening, because of the, uh, well, basically, the, the, the nature of floating point uh, calculation is that basically, in many cases, they'll end up with something that comes out to, you know, to look like an integer. So in other words, you're giving them a rational number, telling them to square it, and the result appears to be the integer too. Which, of course, is, you know, it appears to violate mathematics, you know, you've actually come up with a number, a rational number, that approximates the square root of 2, which is, of course, not possible. Um, but, of course, you know, it's only because of floating point exceptions that we can do this, or floating point, um, I guess, round off errors, or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's only an approximation, of course, but it's a very good approximation. The fact that this is a good approximation means that it can it can fool some calculators. And let's see some more examples uh, of this uh, this this fascinating connection that I'm, I'm trying to show you. So for instance, if we were to choose b equals four, uh, you might be wondering up about b equals three and and we're not gonna neglect it. don't worry, we're gonna come back and talk about b equals three, but just bear with me for the moment. So if b equals four, this is our continued fraction expansion, 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, etc., etc. Again, going on infinitely. And our associated polynomial is x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. And the roots of this equation, of course, we can do a very similar thing as last time. We can use the quadratic formula. Uh, and we end up with, uh, what would that be? 2 plus square root 5 or something like that? Maybe... Uh, yeah, 2 plus square root of 5, yeah. And so 2, semicolon 4, comma 4, comma 4, comma 4, infinitely, would thus be the continued fraction expansion that converged to the square root of 5. That, that uh, of course, we're doing the same thing as last time, basically. It's, it's basically the same process. We're subtracting 2 from both sides, as you can see. And we end up with this formula for uh, approximating the square root of 5, basically. And so with b equal to 6, we can also do the same thing as well. 
And so here are the roots. We get 3 plus the square root of 10. And more generally, if we were to choose an even value for k, or rather for b, so b equals 2k, what would this be equal to? Well, we get 2k, semicolon, 2k, comma, 2k, comma, 2k, on one. And we can substitute this into the equation and get some more general results. So these, these would be the values of the roots. And so that simplifies, in fact, to something much more interesting. It's k plus or minus the square root of 1 plus k squared. And now if we want to isolate the square root, we can also subtract k from both sides. And so we get this result at the bottom. And so here are these cases covered. This is uh, a nice table to start with, I think, because what we're doing is we're saying that if we choose k as any natural number, because again, we said that, you know, b equals 2k, well, that that's just our... You know, it's, it's sort of like a way in discrete mathematics of saying that B is an even number. Um, yeah, that's just sort of the definition of an even integer, in fact. Being equal to 2K, where K is an integer. So now, we can choose any value for K, any natural number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and I have a list here. And what is the result of K squared plus 1 for each value of K? And as you can see, what we're doing is... On the right column, we basically get, or right right columns, I should say, of this of these tables, we get the numbers of the form k squared plus 1, and each of these numbers, we can actually get a continued fraction expansion for its square root. That's basically what I'm telling you. For each of these numbers, we see, you know, in these columns, 2, 5, 10, 17, 26, 37, and it keeps going. For each of these particular natural numbers, we can get, using this method, a very interesting um, continued fraction expansion that approximates the value of the square root of that number. What, you know, right. One of these numbers on the right columns, of course. So obviously this doesn't, obviously doesn't cover uh, all irrational numbers or anything. In fact, it doesn't even cover the square root of any general square-free integer, unfortunately. But it does get uh, does get a nice, I think, class, a nice. Um, I, I think I think I think it's a nice start, at least, to uh, finding rational approximations for irrational numbers. And then, I'm sure you, this, this sort of begs the question, what about odd value b? What about b is an odd number? Well, let's choose b equals 3, for instance. Well, then this is our continued fraction expansion, 3, comma 3, comma 3, comma 3, comma 3. And our associated polynomial, x squared minus 3x minus 1. So we can calculate the roots, and they end up as 3 halves plus the square root of 13 over 2. So it's a little bit more messy, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh but still interesting. And we can apply a very similar kind of concept, very similar, you know, methods to end up with basically what is an approximation for the square root of 13. Or at least, well, yeah. At least the square root of 13 over 2, at least. And we can choose b equals 5. And the roots end up as 5 halves plus the square root of 29 over 2. And in general, if b equals 2k plus 1, we can substitute into the continued fraction, so this is what we get. And substituting into the polynomial, this is the associated polynomial. Uh, and so the roots, we can expand out and simplify a little bit. And we end up with this basic formula right here. And using this, we can also get rational approximations for a different class of numbers.
which is basically all the numbers of a form 4k squared plus 4k plus 5. Where k, again, is some arbitrary integer. So adding this to the table, we can see, you know, an additional column, and so we, we cover a, another sort of general case, so to speak, of irrational numbers. And I was going to give you some exercises, which hopefully I'll put them in the description or in some annotations or something. And feel free to post in the comments the uh, your, your solutions or your explorations, especially if you have, you know, additional questions or... Uh, or other considerations, please, again, let me know in the comments. But the generalization is really showing, what, what I'm really trying to show you is that we have these three different structures, which are polynomials and their roots, general Fibonacci sequences, and the continued fraction expansions for irrational numbers. And that there is a connection between these three things. And we can get from one to the other fairly easily because they're so closely related. And clearly, the Illuminati is behind all of this. Alright, thanks very much. Again, thanks very much for watching. We're going to continue next time with part four, and we're going to talk about some other fairly interesting uh, continued fractions involving E. So, again, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have questions or, or your own explorations or extensions. Please feel free. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks very much.